Hey guys, um, a lot of chaos going on in uh, evangelical uh, churches today, like literally today. I mean, there's always chaos in Protestantism. Uh, uh, but as a former evangelical of 30 years, uh, I still have a lot of friends that are Protestant and um, you know, I care about my brothers and sisters in there. And so I don't say this to uh, gloat or make fun of them. I'm just informing you guys to be prepared because the evangelical exodus is continuing. So um, I'm going to touch on uh, how it affects us Catholics and, and the Latin mass uh, at the end of this video. But first, I want to say if you are buying or selling real estate, please go to realestateforlife.org. Do yourself a favor and do an unborn baby a favor. Real estate for life dot org um and also uh speaking of the latin mass uh before i forget uh even though i'm not a latin mass guy i've never been to a latin mass i know a lot of my brothers and sisters love the latin mass they're very attached to it and you know i haven't uh i heard uh, i guess i heard timothy gordon say this and i think it's a great idea so i just want to pass it on to my uh my viewers write a letter to your bishop and let them know why you love the latin mass so the bishop has letters from sincere Christians who love the Latin Mass and are not divisive, not angry, or just very hurt and sad. Express your, you know, your deepest feelings. And, um, you know, letter campaigns work, you know. I mean, emails are great if you can't write a letter, but letters are better. I mean, it, you know, when the bishop's handed a bunch of letters from his parishioners, that, 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 you know, you see the, vis the visual of that. I think it can make an impact. And, you know... On a positive note, I've heard at least eight bishops say they're not going to change the Latin Mass. Pope Francis has given them that authority. I heard one say he was going to shut it down until further uh, uh, instruction. I guess he had further clarification. He, he didn't really understand. He was an older bishop, didn't really understand uh, the decree from Pope Francis. But for the most part, I'm hearing bishops you know, say they're going to keep it the same way. So you know, that's a positive for you guys. Uh, but before I talk more about the Latin Mass, I just got to tell you, there's so much going on in evangelicalism. A lot of you guys may not be paying attention because you're so consumed with what's happening in the Catholic Church. But I'm just going to touch on three things, you know, that that's happening right now. Uh, number one, the United Methodist Church is beginning to split up. That's the second largest Protestant denomination. Um, and surprisingly... Uh, they're splitting because they voted um, to uh, keep the biblical definition of marriage. So usually it's reversed. Like where Presbyterian churches are always breaking away because they go the opposite. And like all these churches, mainline Methodist is the second largest denominations. But they've had about 50 breaks. You know, if you Google Methodist church, you can come up with at least 50 in the United States and hundreds worldwide. This is how the number of 42,000 how we come up with the number of 42,000 different Protestant denominations because they're distinct, legally distinct denominations from one another. But usually, like with the Presbyterians, they always get more liberal, more liberal, and then conservatives break off. This was surprising to me that churches began breaking off uh, that were liberal and just starting their own new church, okay? Um, that's number one. I guess I said three. I'm going to say four because this one kind of ties in. Southern Baptists, which are the largest Protestant denominations, they're, uh, they're having problems with their new president they just elected. Uh, I think his name is Ed Litton. Uh, they consider him a moderate, and uh, you know a lot of conservatives don't like him. Uh, but even worse than that, he's got caught plagiarizing um, the, the former president of the SBC. So... Uh, a lot of people are, are, are like questioning this guy's character, okay? He comes across like a real nice diplomatic dude, but, you know, his character is in question at this point. So they're having some issues. But um, another big issue was, uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, Hil uh, Morgan McKenzie. She's a uh, worship leader. And she sang songs, you know, she sang Hillsong songs, uh, Elevation. If you're not familiar with these um Elevation is the church that Stephen Furtick started. He's a young kid with the two thousand uh, dollar sneakers all the time and the uh, five hundred dollar haircut. And then uh, Hillsong, uh, that's the one that had uh, <clears throat> Carl Lentz as the pastor in New York. But they, you know, they, you know, all of these have different branches. But Carl Lentz was like the face of uh, 
Hillsong really gifted speaker, but he admitted to having multiple affairs while he was the pastor. So he's gone. And um, Morgan McKenzie said she's uh, going to stop singing these people's songs. Uh, she wants nothing to do with them. But not what's, what's interesting is these guys' lavish lifestyles and, and immoral lifestyles, in a lot of people's views, didn't persuade her. Like Stephen Furtick, you know, like in his 20s, built a $4 million home. This kid's a multimillionaire. He's never worked a day in his life. All he's ever done was preach. Uh, Carl Lentz, uh, you know, you seen you know seen him taking shots with Justin Bieber that didn't bother people. Uh, so Justin Bieber was so disturbed about Carl Lentz, uh, he left the church and uh, got rebaptized because I guess he thought Carl Lentz's uh, baptism was invalid. And here's the here's the here's the point of all this. He didn't understand Christian doctrine, ba- basic Christian doctrine. From the beginning of the church, um, the Christians were against rebaptizing. You know, second rebaptizing is not good. So, because you, you're denying your first baptism, you're denying that the Holy Spirit validly baptized you. Because it's not the man, it's the Holy Spirit that's baptizing you. So, but he was in error, but he didn't know because these churches are very weak on doctrine. And, um, you know, uh, the reason Morgan McKenzie said she was leaving was over doctrine because she heard Stephen Furtick uh, uh, talk about uh, God in, in modes, different modes, uh, which is an ancient heresy called modalism. Uh, and, uh, and I watched Stephen Furtick, and he's a real gifted speaker, and I noticed that he doesn't know the Bible very well. He doesn't know church history at all. And he says things, and I think he's just like shooting from the hip. He's saying things, and he don't even realize he's in error. Like, he, he's saying, like, doctrinally really bad stuff uh, because he's just, a, you know, he's just a young kid making a ton of money and, you know, everybody loves him, you know, because he's, he's a good speaker. He's a, I would say he was called to be a motivational speaker, not a, not a pastor, <laughs> in all honesty. He's a great motivational speaker, but he's very weak in the Bible and very weak on uh, church history. But my point of all this, once these Christians realize that all these churches' doctrines are off. Like, nobody really knows their doctrines. I mean, you have... Um, oh, this was this was the other point I was going to make, so this will, this will make four things going on. John Piper's church, the pastor just resigned. So John Piper started this church, another man-made church, but uh, he kind of did a, uh, a hybrid uh, church because he's Southern Baptist, and he still claims he's Southern Baptist because that's how he grew up, so he's going to be Southern Baptist. That's his tradition. You know, these Protestants are really big on their tradition. Um... So John Pop- Piper said he's Southern Baptist because of tradition, but when he was a young man, about 20 years, 22 years old in seminary, his really smart professor convinced him that Calvinism was true. So he teaches a hybrid of Southern Baptist theology with uh, Calvinism. And uh, so it's funny, like, not only did this guy start his own church, but he really started his own new religion. But that shouldn't surprise you because John Calvin started a new religion at 23 when he rejected 1,500 years of church teachings and, and started teaching Calvinism. But I digress. My point is, there's chaos in Protestantism. And there's been chaos from the very beginning. That's why there's 42,000 different denominations. And Christians that are serious about the Lord excuse me, that are Bible-believing Christians that know the Bible and start learning church history, they start seeing how weak evangelicalism is. They start seeing how Protestant was built on sinking sand and not on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then they finally realize that the church that Jesus Christ established, the Catholic Church, is the one true and holy church, the one apostolic church. And they come back. And that's how I came back. And that's how dozens of my friends came back. And that's how I see Morgan McKenzie coming. And Justin Bieber, you know, eventually is going to come. And all these people are coming. And, you know, I know my Latin Mass friends love the Latin Mass. And I feel bad. I, you know, if, I honestly feel bad that you're worried that you're not going to be able to go to it. But, you know, I'm praying for you guys that more bishops will just allow it. And Pope Francis has given that. But I'm telling you. The new mass is what draws us evangelicals. If Honestly, if I walked in and heard Latin, I might have felt, you know, I'm sure I would have felt the presence of God. But as an evangelical, I would, I would have had a hard time uh, staying there. 
But to hear the Bible, everything in the new mass is the Bible. To hear the Bible read, to hear the Bible prayed, to hear the Bible sung, to hear the Bible in action, what the priest does, what the congregation does. When you're a Bible-believing Christian, that is just so exciting to you. And you, we love the new mass, all those, ex all those former evangelicals. And then, like I said, I've never been to the Latin mass, so you know I'm not the perfect guy to talk about it. But I notice guys that really know the Lord and really know the scriptures love the Latin mass too. So it, maybe it's a deeper, it's a deeper worship maybe for them. But for us evangelicals coming over, we need the new mass. The new mass was ordained by the Holy Spirit for this time, for this day and age. The, the Holy Spirit is moving. We're having a revival in the church of evangelicals coming in. But we need our traditional brothers and sisters. I need you guys. I learned from you guys. Timothy Gordon, I learned from you when you are on my show. Michael Voris, I learned from you when you are on my show. I need you to teach me. You know, help me. Show me if I'm not reverencing the communion host like I should. I, so, so let's unite. You know, just like you inviting me and all these new mass people, I'm inviting you. Come to the new mass. Not to, uh, to, to say what we're doing is wrong, but to show us by example. You know, when I seen a young Spanish kid in my, uh, when I was a new Catholic or, you know, just came back, a new revert, I guess. And I seen him kneel and stick out his tongue and the priest gave him the communion host on his tongue. I, I literally got tears in my eyes. I was like, wow, that is so reverent. So God is calling us to unity. And I, and I, I honestly believe Pope Francis is feeling led by the Holy Spirit to unite his church for a great revival is coming. And we're, we're, we're getting, I'm telling you, we're having an exodus of evangelical Christians, Bible-believing, born-again, blood-bought, charismatic, non-charismatic, reformed, and they're coming in the Catholic Church because of our doctrine and our unity. So let's not let the devil ruin that. Let's not let the devil divide us. Let's be united. Let's stay Catholic. God bless.